coming back, it's torn apart Like I might be nothing You've been leaving all these scars On everything you touch and You got me like, whoa, oh, oh Whoa, oh, oh Whoa, let's go, oh, oh Yeah, let's get it Welcome back, fellow warriors, to the stage of history. My name is Cosmo Jazz, and today we are going to be talking to the one, the only, Ayo Boom. Now, if you're in the Soul Calibur community, then I would be absolutely shocked if you didn't know who this is. Now, that being said, if you don't know who this is, we go into a very deep dive into learning everything about this person, including what their thoughts are on Soul Calibur, some FGC topics that have been going around as a whole, and other things. Now, this is a series that I've been thinking about working on for a while because we always tend to only get information from, say, top players or more people with a said voice on Twitter, just mainly from Twitter, and maybe something from their social media things of Twitch and YouTube per se. But I would like to make it so that maybe we get a little bit more into what their thought process is on certain things that are actually happening within the FGC as a whole. And maybe we'll even branch out outside of the FGC into other topics as well, similar to how we do the podcast we do at the No Name Podcast and all that other things. Now, if there is someone in particular you would like me to try to get on here for this series that I've decided to call Pro on One, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have any further questions for the person as a whole, also let me know down in the comment section below. Lastly, please, please, please feel free to follow the person that is being interviewed because I really want to show the appreciation they have for taking time out of their day to do this for both me and you. And if there are any questions as well that you think I should be doing more into my quote, line of things to be talking to when it comes to the people I interview, once again, let me know down in the comment section below. And without further ado, let's get into this, shall we? Welcome, welcome everyone to the channel. My name is Cosmo Jazz and I'm here with Ayo Boom. And what up? No. Oh, sorry. You're good. Really, really vibe like that. <laughs> Let's just start by saying this is the first time I've really done this kind of thing, so it's gonna be messy, and it's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to be talking a lot about like some FGC things, some things with caliber, some things that you have been doing, sir, as well as um, you're coming up into the FGC slash Soul Caliber slash Anime Fighter slash everything itself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but before we begin, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself, including accomplishments, things that you're happy about, things you're not happy about. Just, the floor is yours. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what's up, everybody? I go by Boom. Uh, most of you know me as Boom. Uh, I'm from the great state of Maryland, from the great city of Baltimore. Um, I love Maryland, as you probably already know. Um, I'm Maryland scene. They're my homies. They're, they're, they're everything to me. Um, a little bit about me outside of the gaming world. Uh, I have a master's degree in emerging media, which is like uh, social media stuff, social media marketing, digital marketing, social media uh, culture, stuff like that. Uh, so I have, I have a degree in kind of like, I guess you can say memes and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking to get a PhD in digital humanities at some point in my life. Um, uh, I like, I'm a normie sometimes. I like sports. Uh, I also enjoy um, the occasional shooting game, um, but inside the game, you probably know uh, me as probably one of the one of the better Yoshimitsu's in the entire world. Um, I've gotten multiple top eights, uh, won a major in Undernight Inbirth uh, Unist back in April. Uh, it wasn't big, but a win's a win. We take those. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I just want to have people see people have fun and see people laugh and that's my whole main goal is just make people feel comfortable wherever they are whoever they are that's and that's what drives me to do what i do sounds good and i believe you remember you're saying you, you yeah i remember you saying that you really didn't even try to go into that uh unas tournament really it just yeah, kind of happened you winning 
Oh, okay. So, okay. So, what happened was, I was, I was, I got ninth in caliber, which I was really salty about. And then I went to bed, and I thought that the Eunice top eight was at twelve, but it was at ten. And so I woke up at like ten oh five, and they're like, "Hey, we need you." And I was like, "Oh shoot!" So I ran down to the to the ballroom, and they're like, "Oh, don't worry about it. Your opponent's not even here, so he's gonna get DQ'd." And I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, all right. And then somehow I ended up winning. I didn't even. I wasn't even trying. I mean, I was trying to win, but I didn't expect myself to win. I didn't expect to get that far. I didn't even think it was. Uh, possible, but alas, I did it. Hey, win to win, as he said. <laughs> so, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, because I believe at one point you said you like to teach people, as you mm-hmm. would say. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about is the FTC has been on for like a long time at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to see what your thought process was on basically, Let's say the learning of fighting games, as far as like people being taught, people learning themselves. Like, what would you say maybe would be some differences between maybe how it started versus where we are now? Uh, I think a big thing when it came comes to where it started is actual like video footage, mm. right? Like, so I I, I uh, joined the FGC in 2009. I'm an O-Niner, right? Mm. And so a lot of uh, back then it was just like there's not really a lot of footage to like to like get information from, right? You kind of had to learn by trial and error, right? And then the interesting thing about that was different scenes had different ways of playing that you would only experience if you went out to experience those things. Nowadays, you can go watch Wednesday Night Fights and be like, oh, West Coast plays this way. I can go to Buminati Battles and be like, hey, uh, East Coast plays this way. I can watch NLBC and be like, oh, New York plays this way, right? I think uh, the, one of the biggest things is actually video knowledge. Mm. um and just be able to see things and then people uh i think with with the the knowledge uh, that's or with the, with the video stuff that is coming and people being able to have their eyes on things i think one of the things that's changed is like the accessibility of fighting games mm-hmm. um fighting games are hard uh mm-hmm. they're yes. very difficult <laughs> <laughs> um and so like the accessibility has kind of gone uh up because of the way people can see things also the, the games are becoming easier to to get into and play Right. Um, but I think when it comes to teaching and learning about fighting games, uh, back then it was just like, you got you to gotta learn to the point where you just, for me, it was like, we'll teach you once you get, become worthy enough for us to think about teaching you. Mm-hmm. Right. It was more like a, like a earn your kind of stripes kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And nowadays it seems more kind of cultivating and be like, hey, you want to play? I'll teach you. Right. Hey, you're interested? I'll teach you. But back then it was just like, I'll teach you if, like, you make me sweat in a tournament match, right? Mm-hmm. And that that's, like, the big shift, right? And, and you know, kind of like, like that, that tough love in a sense. Like, some, some scenes still have that, but um, back in the day, it was, more, it was a lot of tough love. And now it's just like, oh, you want to learn? Come through. Let's just not make the scene dead. You know, it's a different kind of vibe, right? People talk about the arcade vibe and, like, how it was way tougher now. And people talk about... Um, Early FGC, the grass, quote unquote, grassroots FGC before it came esports. Uh, it's real. The, the 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 culture is definitely different. The culture definitely shifted, um, and so I think uh, people. I think nowadays it's easier to get into fighting games, but I feel like uh, the method of getting better uh, has gotten more accessible now. But I think that like the drive kind of has changed, right? I kind of enjoyed that. Hey, prove it to me. You know, I kind of I kind of enjoyed that. Hey, prove it to me. Kind of kind of vibe and kind of culture. Um, but, um, yeah, man, teaching is fun. People, I think one of the things, the biggest thing that people need to understand when they are learning a fighting game is they need to understand how they learn best. Mm -hmm. Or do you learn visually? Do you learn kinesthetically? Do you learn through audio cues, right? Figure out a way that allows you to learn, uh, figure out the way that you learn best and then apply that method to fighting games. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, like you say, like those grassroots and things because like i think a lot of people especially like say a game like say tekken uh a lot of people think that there's like an elitist stand kind of thing mm-hmm. where like oh you are a newbie person so we're not even going to be talking to you versus the i don't know the pro player or say it's just like well let's learn and see if we can learn all together just like you said um as far as that stigma goes so it's interesting to, to, that you say that um it was even more back then because honestly like you i was more of an o-niner myself but i really didn't get into like fighting games to like let's say 
nearing the end of Tag 2's era. Right, right, right. Uh, um, so it's interesting to hear that that's what it was maybe more back then than it was now. Um, but going back into that learning thing, I would say let's switch over to like maybe Caliber, for example. Uh, say that a newcomer was coming to, didn't know what Caliber was in any kind of aspect or whatever. They're just barely learning the game. What would you, as a pro player, probably give them for information? Like, maybe one tip to, like, really get them going on to, to their road of uh, learning the game? Tip is going to be probably the most, the wildest tip in, when you first hear it, but it probably makes the most sense once you think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, figure out what keeps you playing the game. Right? What character makes you turn the game on? What character do you go, oh, that's sick, that's cool. You know what I mean? What character keeps you interested in the game? Right? Mm -hmm. so, a lot of people come, come into like learning about Caliber, they're like, oh, what, what's the best character? Blah, 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 blah. But like, just because they're the best character doesn't mean they're the best character for you, right? The best character for you is what, what makes you turn the game on, what keeps you playing every single day, what keeps you... What's the character that you think about, like, oh, this character's cool, what's the character you dream about, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, find the character that makes it, makes the game fun and find the character that makes you keep the game on. That's really the biggest tip that I can give anybody for any game. I'd say that's, that's, that's a really good tip. Although I can see how somebody could be like, Man, I don't know about that one. But, yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. It's like, it's like, yeah, because people are like, well, I want to learn how to learn the game. Well, like, okay, you can learn how to learn the game by just enjoying the game, right? There's no, there's no, Caliber is a very free-flowing game, so you can do whatever you want and probably learn some aspect of Caliber in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. right? Like, this is a game that, this is a game that encourages you to kind of dip your foot in the, in the pool and be like, oh, this, maybe this is cold, okay, this is lukewarm, you know, just... You just, in this game, you just got to do it. Just explore. Just have fun. And you'll learn a lot more that way than someone like teaching you step by step. Mm. Fair enough. Good, good. Um, going off of something like that as well, uh, because of how you say I want to learn the game and whatnot, one thing I feel like that has kind of changed that, quote, I guess, meta, you could say, is the um, fluctuation, if you will, of uh, the tier list. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would like to know what your thoughts are on, say, having multiple tier, tier lists out there, most people agreeing on things versus having their own opinions on it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think tier lists are good mm -hmm. when they're used as discussion points and not law, mm -hmm. right? I think when people, I think a thing that people don't get or don't understand is the fact that tier lists are, tier lists hidden, like, think about tier lists is that, they show you what the person values in the game, mm -hmm. right? So the tier lists that are very similar, uh, they value similar qualities in the game, right? Tier lists that are very different, they value different quality, mm -hmm. right? For a time, there was, I think it was like middle of season one, where I was like, Yoshimitsu is a top 10 character, right? Mm -hmm. And people, some people were like, Yoshimitsu is not a top 10 character, right? Well, the people that didn't think Yoshimitsu was a top 10 character really valued neutral and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I value like the ability to to control your opponent, um, opponent's mind state, right? And Yoshimitsu is very good at one of those things and very bad at the at the other thing, mm -hmm. right? And so tier lists in, in general is, is just of, like what people value in the game, right? There's some tier lists that are unanimous, like no, no matter what you value, the character is just strong because they're strong at everything. Mm -hmm. But normally outside of like the top five, everything is jumbled, and part of that is you know Caliber is a very well balanced game. Mm -hmm. But also, it's just what people value, what people think is important, what people think is not important, you know? So, I think tier lists are good to kind of see what people are valuing in the game, but tier lists never tell the whole entire story. It's never the whole thing when it comes to tier lists. Fair enough. Good, good. Hmm. It's also interesting you said it, because, I mean, I always go back to, like, last year's EVO, where we literally had a Valdo just mm -hmm. take everything, and that was shaking up their, quote, tier list as well, so... That was uh, that was a fun tearless season. You know, people were like Valdo's B tier. Well, then how come Valdo won Evo? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, people were just, you know, just surprised. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Well, then the next thing I wanted to go to, as far as caliber goes, is well, honestly, this could be a general thing for most fighting games as well. The debate between guest character versus returning character. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to, say, these things, which one do you think is probably 
the thing that developers probably should go for more because a lot of people can say, well, the guest character could be there because of bringing more people into the game versus the returning character, which really maybe bring more people to the game, but it also helps the returning character, uh, returning character, returning players uh, to the game. So what were your thought passes beyond that? I definitely 100% think guest character is the way to go. Uh, if you do have older players that are going to play your game, the players that play the game play the game because they love the game. Some people play the game because they love their character, which is fine. But there's a lot... The, the, the return on investment for new players coming in with guest characters is way higher than putting in a return character, right? I haven't seen my main in this game for nine years, but I'm still playing this stupid game. It's not a stupid game. I'm still playing the game. I love the game, right? <laughs> so, I haven't seen my main in this want. game for... <laughs> yeah, but I haven't seen my main in the game since 2000 and... Whenever Cop before came out, 2009... 2008, whatever. I haven't seen my main in this game, but I still play the game, right? Because mm-hmm. I just love the game, right? And so I 100% agree that guest characters are the way to go um, when it comes to just developers in general. Like, uh, new people, having new people come to the game is way more important than keeping the older folks because the older folks, depending on how long they've been around, understand that games change. Mm-hmm. And so if they've been around for more than one game change, they're, like, they're, likely, to, they're likely to already stay, right? And it's cool. To cater, you definitely have to cater to your returning players. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely think newer players is definitely the way to go, and, and guest characters are 100% the should be the focus when it comes to uh, games like this. Mm-hmm. And I can honestly say I'm with you on that one, because I'm in a similar boat with uh, Tekken 7 and June Kazama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Been missing her for a while, but hey, it is what it is. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, moving back to Caliber... Um, as you said, you are a Yoshi player, um, though I do believe you are looking for, like you said, uh, your character is missing. Can you say what that character is, and do you think they'll be back anytime soon? Uh, I want Young Song. He probably won't be back. He'll probably be back in, in the old, decrepit form of Huang. But mm. uh, as long as there's some sort of style there, that is, I will play that character, even if it's Huang. Just give, just allow me to dress up Huang in Young Song's Caliber 4 outfit, mm. and I'll be good to go. Hmm. Interesting. I actually had a theory about why it would probably be um, Young Sung, to be honest. Uh, but then I think it kind of got squashed with the fact that Amy came in. Yeah, um, and 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 spoiler is kind of leaked. Yeah. So <laughs> I uh, I have I if if Huang has Young Sung's moves, I will probably one hundred percent play Huang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, <laughs> you get something right. Can't, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm begging. I'm trying to beg and choose. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do both. You feel me? <laughs> Which is very respectful, and I would probably do the same. <laughs> but um, so going back to Yoshi, say once again that a person's trying to play the game and they think Yoshi's kind of cool. What would you do to maybe sell this character in any iteration? He's basically been in, to be honest. Uh, so that people can come to play this character more, or look at this character at least more. Puku, like I would just be like, look, Sapuku, this is dope. <laughs> uh, all his stances are dope, man. The, this character, like the cool thing about Yoshimi too, is that like you will not you will not be able to express yourself with any other character the way you do Yoshimitsu. Like, Yoshimitsu is so expressive, right? Mm-hmm. Like like if you want to like be it be a nut. You can be a nut. If you want to be conservative with your playstyle, you can be conservative with your playstyle, right? The character is just literally uh, whatever you want to imprint, put your imp- however you want to put your imprint on this character, this character al- is, is allows you to put your imprint on it however you want, right? Mm-hmm. And like it's and the cool thing about it is it's all effective. There's no bad way to play Yoshimitsu, right? And I think uh, for someone who's learning a, a game and someone who's new to Yoshimitsu, having a character to where you can kind of play any kind of way allows you to develop a play style that's actually really really cool and it's really helpful for um newer players to, to get into the game because a lot of times people newer players will be like well if i'm not playing this character right i don't want to play the game but like if you can't play the character wrong mm-hmm. you know the likelihood of you of you staying increases right and yoshimitsu is cool i mean as long as they put him in japanese he's, he's cool like i understand the english voice yoshimitsu lovers but mm-hmm. at the same time i don't um, but yeah, Yoshi, yeah, that's what I would say. Like you can do whatever you want with the character and not be wrong. I would say, would you say it's like the same with like anime and Japanese versus English dub kind of yep. thing? 
Yes, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help that I'm a big weeb. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but before I get to this next question, I wanted you to talk a little bit more about the Buminati kind of uh, thing that you tend to do, like the event that you have on yeah. your stream and whatnot. Just let everyone know what it is and why they should be looking into it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Buminati is a collective group of, of uh, Illuminati people. No, it's just a group of friends um, <laughs> that uh, we decided that we were going to be creative with the Caliber scene. The Caliber needed something new, um, and we just stepped to the challenge. Uh, it actually originally started as a way to uh, encourage up-and-comers to like play and give up-and-comers a, a, a place where they can be seen and, and be heard and, and a place where we can... like. Look at their matches and help them get better, right? It was just it's just a, a, a way for people to get to to grow the seed, and then it kind of evolved into something way bigger than any of us could ever imagine. Um, doing events for uh, people, uh, doing big team events, um, raising over two thousand dollars for uh, an event that blows my mind to this day. Which Running charity well, events. Right? <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was that was wild. I still can't believe it to this day. Um, to the point now we're running weeklies and uh, having a, a super cool event with some super cool stuff and getting sponsored and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much the Boomerang in a nutshell. We just run stuff and our stuff is based off of the word edutainment. Uh, everything I do is based off of that word. Uh, if you want to teach people, my, my thing is if you want to teach people, you trick them into enjoying themselves. And then at the end of the day, they realize that they learned something. Right. Um, and that's what the Buminati has has done throughout its lifetime is we've educated, but also we've entertained. A lot of the caliber memes you see um, are from the Buminati. We make people laugh and then enjoy their time learning. That's that's literally our main goal, you know. And I think it's become something very special uh, to the point where we're coming back, even though we took a long break. Uh, we're coming back. So yes, be... yes. I mean, with something that big, I would didn't expect it to be like. Oh yeah, we're gonna be riding back the next week. Like, no, that that takes time to prep and stuff. So. Oh yeah, we took a good. Uh, actually, it was only like three months off. Which I mean, I, I, uh, mm. I, I it's about time. It's about time we came back. Mm. Now, I do want to be interested in like say, how did you get to the format of it by chance? Like, what what made y'all decide on that kind of format? Or the uh, the team league, or just what we normally normally did. Uh, um, pretty much both, but mostly the team league. If I may uh, push to okay. a certain direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we were looking to do something different from everything and everybody. I mean, every everyone does tournaments. Uh, everyone does first to five sets, but you know, I think it was it it was a. Uh, it's like, why not just do a team tournament? Why not get people together? Why not build some sort of camaraderie, especially during COVID? Mm -hmm. um, get people uh, a group that they believe in. Get people a group that they that they, give people a reason to want to get better, right? So we we're just like, you know, why not? It was also like uh, shout outs like the the Street Fighter League, you know, stuff like that. We want to do something kind of akin to that, except with Caliber, you know, just pretty much just picking up on what's successful in other scenes and bringing it to our scene, just because. Uh, if things are successful in other scenes, why can't it be successful in our scene? We just got to put our own spin on it and make it like make it like it's it's actually our own, right? Mm -hmm. um, the EU folks did a three v three team event, and we were like, okay, cool. Can we steal that? And they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, go for it. So we were like, I bet, and uh, made it a five v five format because we thought three three v three be kind of like it'd be cool, but it'd be less team camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, figure 5v5, you get you get like a whole team, you get like a whole different play styles and stuff like that and more eyes. And you have groups like Omega XCN's team that was like a, a group of well of, of well knit together youngins who actually made it very, very far. Then you have a group of like Zephyr Kai's team or Rich Six's team, or a bunch of powerhouses. And you have like Party Girl's team, which nobody expected to make it to the finals, but they did. You know what I mean? And people were like it was it was legitimately like a, a like kind of like a mini like NBA league, you know, and I think that's what we wanted to do and what we, what we wanted to um, kind of encapsulate, you know, a, a real thing. Uh, we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do with it, but what we I think we, we, we did well with what we had and uh, to the point people were asking for another one to which I say, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I will say that there is something in the works. I cannot spoil it, but uh, Team League will be coming back soon. Nice. Well, I'll definitely be looking forward to whatever the announcement is, as I'm sure a lot of people are. 
Yeah, I'm glad. I'm scared because I still have to do the trailer thing. But uh, the announcement, regardless, is going to be pretty sick. I think people are going to like really like this announcement. It's a, it's a format we've never done before. It's it's a with some cool people that we've never partnered with before. So it's going to be sick. Yeah, well, I'm now very much more interested now. <laughs> I always love new things, but honestly, because you've answered the way you is, it kind of almost answered another question I was going to ask, which being with the success of the Illuminati, uh, would you say that you, for this thing, because of, of course, due to COVID and whatnot, we don't get many things out of the events. Would you say if somebody, say, wants to do something like this, would they want, would you want them to do a similar format to this or maybe create their own ideas as well to maybe do something even more brand new or say out of what you're doing here yeah the more original the better like you can take my format if you want but you're not really going to get much with it right Mm -hmm. i want people to kind of come into this and see like oh this is something that has been done and then take that and do something else with it right i don't mind if someone's like hey we have a team league and it's a better format than mine go for it that's less work on my part and i get to sit back and enjoy the show that's cool with me Right, but I, I definitely want people to kind of be uh, be original and do their own thing. And I think one of the issues now is that there's too much of the same thing, which is why you see numbers dwindling and tournaments stuff like that. Because that's all there is is just tournaments, mm-hmm. right? And it's just over. Like, sure, Triple J is doing some good stuff with the Parsec te- uh, first to tens and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, everything's dwindling because everything's the same. It's becoming stale, you know. So I, I definitely want to encourage originality. But it's also hard, too, because it's hard to be original. It's hard to come up with new things, um, mm. just in general, you mm. know, unless you're like a, like Sherlock Holmes in the inventor department or I don't know what the heck I'm trying to say. Unless you're smarter than me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm sure somebody will get that and be like, yeah, I totally get that, man. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, just, I, I definitely would say, like, take what's been done, but spin it to where it becomes original. Because there's nothing new. There's, nothing, there's never, never anything new under the sun. It's just how well can you spin it to make it appear original. Makes sense. Alrighty. Well, let's move on to a, another topic that has actually mainly been in the NRS scene right now, but I'm sure it's been around other places as well, mm-hmm. which is the debate of casuals playing with, well, casual, more casual people playing with pros and maybe trying to get some, quote, clout off of it. Um... What are your thoughts possibly on something like that? Because recent, just to give you a little bit of an example, um, there has been a player named Scar, you might know mm-hmm. who that is, um, who recently had a, I think, first to 10 with uh, another player, and they decided to like blow it up saying, oh, I won or whatever, trying to do a video and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it was, of course, it was on an online basis and in a casual match, and that started a huge debate of actually pros actually playing with other people uh and wonder if they should maybe even stop at some a certain point so i was wondering what your thoughts about this might be on that uh i understand both sides i understand scar being annoyed because that is annoying i the reason why i changed my steam name to random like light bright 89 or like tumbleweave 76 is because i don't feel like dealing with that you know mm-hmm. People, and like people will see me and then they'll like win around and teabag or they'll win a game and teabag and run away and just, just like well that like that ruins my experience right mm-hmm. and sometimes people forget that pro, pro players are people too right we don't want our experience to be ruined you know we want to be able to play the game and enjoy the game just like everyone else right mm-hmm. uh but for the up and comer i get it i understand wanting clout but like it, i understand the logic train but it still doesn't make sense to me I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm more on the side of Scar. Like, I understand that you know, using first attempts to measure your skill. Like, that's cool. If you want a first attempt to measure your skill, I'm all for that. That is good. You, you always want to measure your skill. But if you're doing a first attempt just to like put it online and be like, hey, I did this. I beat this person. Then it's like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Okay, you beat the person in the first attempt. You get your five minutes of fame, and then, and then what? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense to me in the long run, right? And I don't know, like, people do that all the time. You know, they'll beat me, they'll teabag, and I'm like, okay, cool. You beat me in an online setting. Uh, exactly. I'll, yeah, it's like, all right, great, you did it. I like to say, like, see, like, see me offline. Like, legitimately, like, if, if, there's people, if there's someone who, you know, beats me online, it's like, okay, cool, you beat me online in, a, in, a, in an online environment and in an not optimal environment. 
Uh, I'm abusing this because, you know, it's a way to practice. And, like, even first attempts is, is just practice, right? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, like, boasting that you beat somebody in a first attempt that's not a serious first attempt is like, yo, I beat you in practice. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, oh, you're trying new things? Well, I still beat you while trying new things. You know what I mean? That doesn't really make any sense to me. And and mm-hmm. to brag about, like, and to, to, to brag about that is, is the biggest thing is I'm trying to get that. Like, it's okay to, like, if someone's patting someone, you win the first 10. Great. Okay, you won the first 10, you know, great, cool. Um, but, you know, if you're going to brag about it, then I question your, your reasoning for playing fighting games in the first place. Are you doing it for clout? Are you doing it to learn? Or like, what are you doing it for? And to be honest with you, playing fighting games for clout is not the wave. Trust me. There are way better sports slash esports, way better things to do for clout than to say, hey, I beat somebody in the first of 10. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's kind of how I see it. Yep, makes sense to me, and I'm in 100% agreement on this. Um, especially with the whole online setting thing, it's like, it, it really doesn't matter, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, lastly, on the questions, is you have been on a couple of teams, and you have been outside of a couple of teams. Mm-hmm. I would like you to possibly tell like somebody who may be even looking at teams what maybe they should be looking for, should they even really join a team, what reasons they might want to join a team, just a lot of things surrounding that. Um, yeah. It depends on how you define team. Like, mm-hmm. if you're trying to join a team for people that are just, like, to group people to get better with, mm-hmm. sure. that I think that's fine. I think anybody can do that. But when it comes to, like, the higher tier teams and talking about sponsorships, mm-hmm. I think you should be very, very careful. A lot of people uh, will do sponsorships just to be sponsored. Mm-hmm. And then they re- they'll sign their contract without reading it, and then they realize it's actually the worst contract they've ever signed in their life. Mm-hmm. They realize that everything they do is not their own anymore, and stuff and stuff like that is actually just like the worst thing ever. I'm not speaking from experience, mm-hmm. um, but I'm speaking for from other people's experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would say be really really careful. Like if you're looking to actually get sponsored and looking to actually like you know join a team that supports you, make sure they support you in the contract right Mm -hmm. don't give away anything you do for free right Mm -hmm. don't just be an asset um that with with no return on investment right because sometimes having letters in front of your name could be more harmful than helpful Mm -hmm. you know um i would say like if you are going to join a team make sure you're committed to to make sure you're committed to the team it's like almost like a a good job search right like if you're going to work for a company you want to make sure you, you align with the values of the company and, and stuff like that you would do the same thing with teams you know certain teams have certain vibes and certain voices do you vibe with those vibes do you vibe with those voices do you vibe with the other people on the team mm-hmm. right uh stuff like that there's a lot more to it than just being like oh money right and mm-hmm. um because sometimes the money is not always always there sometimes the money is not always the way that you want it right so i would just say when it comes to looking for a team a sponsorship be very careful and be very very picky Mm-hmm. You make sure you value yourself way more than you think you should when it comes to looking for a sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and there were two questions I slightly skipped over. I forgot. Um, one was about caliber and how, like most people, when it comes to a game, they'll talk about one of two things. They'll talk about this is broken or this needs to be uh, buffed for the most part. But the one thing I think a lot of people don't, at least you don't see a lot, is the thing that people maybe overhype or they don't hype up enough that maybe makes the game either better or worse. And I was wondering if there anything in the game that you could think of that maybe people just kind of zoom right past over. Uh, huh, that's a good question. Certain characters like Taki, certain characters like Mitsurugi, as well uh i think those three characters are slept on i think a lot of th- i like i think outside of i think Azul's not really slept on but taki mm-hmm. and mitsurugi i think they're very slept on i think mitsurugi players are bad at their character not all of them but some of them are bad at their character and don't understand how that character works mm-hmm. same thing with taki not all of them but, but a majority of them and if they had a higher level plane of understanding the game and understanding like uh, what their character can do and how their character affects people, they'd be like, wow, this character is actually really, really good, right? Mm-hmm. Mitsu has no bad lows. Mitsu is, has, it's like a truck. Taki is just the most annoying thing you ever fought against in your entire life, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it takes good people to kind of exploit that, 
right? And I think that's kind of healthy. I think it's kind of healthy. I don't think a character like Aswell is very healthy mm -hmm. um, in a sense that, you know, Axwell 3B. There's some characters that are just like that, but I don't think that's super healthy for the game's lifespan. Season 1, it wasn't that healthy. And then they did nerf it in there. And at the end of the day, there was really only one Aswell player, so you can kind of debate back and forth there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, outside of that, I don't really think there's anything that's really busted in this game. I think the things that were busted, they actually patched out like Sophie's uh, Soul Charge 2-6A plus B, uh, Cervantes' A6BB, or A6B, uh, Soul Charge A6B, stuff like that. Um, Yoshimitsu's uh, Unbreakable Ring Out Grab, which I personally think they should keep in the game, but that's just me being a little biased, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So I think... Um, yeah, I think the game's pretty in a pretty okay, uh, pretty okay spot. Um, yeah, I don't have any complaints besides maybe the fact that it's a little too balanced, but that's a different issue for a different day. Fair enough. Then now, now the last question, <laughs> which <laughs> is, uh, we're nearing basically the end of the year, and of course a lot of things have happened, a lot of things haven't happened, but is there anything before the year ends that you would like to complete as far as anything for the most part um end of the year i haven't really thought about that um at the end of the year i want to be able to breathe life back into the caliber six scene um i don't really want to win anything online because it doesn't really mean that much to me um, because, you know, being an offline competitor doesn't really, like, doesn't carry the same weight. But I want to be able to keep the scene alive. I want to be able to say at the end of the year that, you know, I did a good thing this year. 2020, I did a good thing in breathing life to the scene and keeping the scene alive. I did a good thing in, in inspiring the scene to be alive. I did a good thing in inspiring people to want to play this game, inspiring people to want to try new things, inspiring people to have fun with this game. Um, that's kind of my, my biggest goal. Um, and have I done that? Some people will say yes. Uh, but have I done that to, to the effect that I want to have it done? Probably not. You know, I want to. At the end of the day, I want Caliber Six to be on a grand scale. I want Caliber Six to be in the same breath uh, as uh, consideration when it comes to games like Street Fighter Five and Tekken Seven and stuff like that. The big name games, right? Like we were on the Evo stage with these games, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's always there's always more to accomplish. There's always more to kind of uh go for and try to get and that's my that's my goal at the end of the day is to, to bring caliber to the next level uh community wise and even just like uh esports wise really if you want to get esports with it um that's my goal all right sounds good well thank you for stopping by being the first one of this series which i think i'm gonna call pearl on one i think that sounds okay. good <laughs> that sounds cool to me and um, is there anything you would like to plug or anything like that before we send off? Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, on Twitch, uh, Instagram, if you really want to follow me on Instagram, uh, AYOB00M. Um, that's me, shouts to the Maryland scene, Maryland the homies, shouts to uh, currently part of the Temple Storm community team, shouts to Temple Storm, mm -hmm. if you know the thing. Um, shout out to all people that support me, you, uh, shout out to, I don't know, life, my family, everybody, you know, shout out to Yoshimitsu, um, and yeah, shout out to Yun Sung when he, when he makes his grand return. Indeed. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening and we will catch you all next time. Peace.